Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Center County Retirement Board for August 20th, 2020. Uh, we are going to look for a merge to receive the minutes and, look for, and approve the minutes from August 6th. Would there be a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. So moved. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any final discussion on that? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion is carried. Okay, and we've received correspondence from CSP regarding intermediate aggregate and aggregate for fixed income question and then we also have an art a little bit of discussion about an RFP later on so jason we'll turn it over to you now okay sure uh so um at the last retirement board meeting um when cs mckee was presenting or sorry pfm was presenting their uh updated presentation the question came up um Commissioner Pike from you about why we were in the intermediate aggregate versus the aggregate, which had historically performed better. So I posed that question to Rob Rossi at CS McKee. Um, I attached his response to uh, the EVA, to the meet, uh, minutes or meeting today, but um, it looked like as of in 2014 or so, um, they were trying to capture a little bit better interest rates um, and uh, that was, uh, to his point, a good move through October of 2018, so almost two years ago. Um, but since then, uh, the aggregate has continued to perform better than the intermediate aggregate. Um, and just to tie in, since it is in our conversation coming up, if you'll notice in their um, proposal uh, for realigning their investments coming up, it, we are moved in that proposal to the uh, aggregate versus the intermediate aggregate. Um, so we're, we'd be switching back to the aggregate at that point. The, again, that's the historically performing better one. That's just part of that proposal, but um, it is something at least that they also recognized when they were making that proposal. Okay, so again from uh their email uh, there's i'm just rereading re the email. okay all right did anybody have any uh, uh questions or comments uh, regarding their email no that's pretty clear okay and just from my standpoint it doesn't if we have if we have the ability to change to a better to a better uh, um, strategy in terms of those two options, it would make sense to go to that. But we're not we are going to be having a long larger conversation about um, submit, uh, releasing an RFP potentially. So we can always revisit this one and ask them to put us into a different um, you know uh, different mix, but. Uh, any further discussion on this before we go to the conversation regarding the RFP? Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to the agenda and move into new business, which is a discussion and, and approval of RFP passive management of the large cabinet. And we do have a proposal. Uh, from CS McKee that was an unsolicited proposal and this would be just for our record to uh, discuss I, I will note that it is uh, probably not a coincidence that we have been discussing the potential for moving a portion of our fund to passive management and in addition we've been discussing at least my, I've been sharing this at retirement board meetings about how there's been a little bit of a concern about what CS McKee is doing when it comes to um, their fund and how it's not necessarily uh, it's it's losing against the, the index and the benchmark I should say and so it's been doing so for 10 years and so 
it's not unsurprising that, or we should note the fact that now they're offering to go passive. So uh, I just I just make a note of that. I'll, I'll put it that way. So um, so again, this would be to continue our discussion about uh, seeking uh, RFPs from other investment strategies that would uh, move our large cap due to the fact that it has been underperforming uh, during the last 10 years and even longer uh, to, to potentially look at other strategies, including, including passive. And so that's on the agenda. We can discuss C.S. McKee's proposal, but uh, I would suggest that if we're going to go with an RFP, it really doesn't make sense to look at their proposal too much. They can just submit that as part of the RFP. So um, I'll, I'll stop there and we can discuss this as, as, as need be. Any, any feedback on this? Yeah, so I just, um, um, I, I mean, uh, frankly, from seeing uh, uh, PFM's uh, report and analysis of a retirement fund, um, it is evident that the large cap managers have not been perform both large cap managers, not just CS McKee, but Twin as well, um, have not been performing either as well to benchmark or as they um, promised that they might that they should perform, um, and uh, that also uh, noted that um, Emerald in their in our small cap has been performing very well over the years uh, against the benchmark um, against other small cap uh, investors. Um, so you know I think uh, the idea of moving to um, passive management, putting an RFP out for passive management of the large cap makes sense. Um, I will note CS McKee's proposal is to change our current investments with them to fit within our current investment statement. Um, so I don't know that they would view it as an RFP, but I certainly it is an upheaval of what we currently have with them. Um, fairly significant upheaval uh, to what we have been discussing with passive management stuff. So. Um, uh, I think their stance is, you know, we're they're just changing a little bit what we have with them, but it is a substantial uh, alteration. So um, I, I would agree that it, it is more of an RFP uh, from our standpoint than it is from theirs. Any other feedback or questions? Yes. Yeah, this is Mark. Um, <clears throat> you know, seeing that outside analysis, um, it does look like two of our three large cap, well, two of our three stock managers are just, they're not even hitting the benchmarks. Um, so <clears throat> why we would not do an RFP and why we would keep our assets with somebody who's been underperforming by 200 basis points over a multiple year period, I, I just don't think that makes any sense. Any other comments or questions? I'm curious in the past, what has the retirement board done to analyze whether or not we've been hitting the seven and a half percent goal? Sure. So uh, when the Corn Ferry, the Hay Group, does our actuarial assessment, mm -hmm. uh, there have been few times where we've actually, you know, obviously hit seven and a half percent. It's usually, you know, from the preceding last few years, it's been 19 percent, 22 percent. It could be, you know, negative five. So it, 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 it's, it's, it's an, it's more of a long term 7.5 mm -hmm. percent. And so, um, but in the last several years, we've seen a decrease of it. Uh, and so the recognition is that we're going to, we're going to have a, we, we were going to be having a lot of good years, again, coming out of the Great Recession, um, and subsequent to that, we've, we've had a really good years, uh, but it's more about uh, having that averaged out on a longer term uh, to 7.5%. And again, we had conversations about 
was that the best benchmark? Should we go to 7.25? But we ultimately en ended up at keeping it seven and a half. So right. one of the met one of the metrics, at least from my standpoint, has been looking at the percent that we are funded. And so mm -hmm. if we if we can keep it to obviously 100% funded or above, uh, that's a good thing because that's going to help reduce our uh, ADC as we go forward, and that's a positive. And another metric from that has been what is our ADC and how is that changing and how is that flowing? Um, mm -hmm. And so there wasn't, there hasn't been necessarily a, you know, where after we receive the report, we say, you know, we're, we're, we're hitting, are we at the seven and a half? Or are we not? But we mm -hmm. are, we do track it typically. Um, uh, but there, I don't think there's ever been a time where we've said, you know, we're going to have a discussion about, did we hit the benchmark last year? It's typically right. where is our, again, what's our ADC look like? That's really been the, the benchmark. Um, okay. For how we've done it again that's that's during the last nine years at least mm -hmm. i can i can speak to that so when you speak about a a long term uh seven and a half percent uh rate um how long term are you thinking over like a five year rolling average uh over a ten year rolling average do you have a time frame in mind over that what that long term means I think our actuary when we would receive uh, and corn. I'm gonna try to see if I can pull it up here. Mm -hmm. I can't. I can't recall how far. Yeah, here we go. Um, I can't recall how far we would go back, but um, in that actuarial report. Um, but uh, here it is. Hey, Mike. If I can just please. Uh, yeah. Our investment. A uh, policy statement uh, notes that um, the board expects the account to achieve the following objectives over a five-year moving time. Frame. Oh, okay. Thank yes. you. Total return. And I know I have that document, but yeah. I didn't remember that, Jason. So thank you very much. Yep. Yep. No, you're, you're at you know, the great, great point, Jason. And then on our, on our, during our last corn ferry evaluate, evaluation, valuation report uh, that was issued to us in May, of this year, but it was for December 31st of 2019. Right. On, page, on page 15, they actually talk about the history of the rate of uh, valuation. And mm -hmm. I think I can uh, pull this off here, um, share my screen here. Uh, it is it is basically, they it breaks it down. Everybody can see that it breaks it down over the History of rate of returns and the uh, five-year average and ten-year average. If you can all see that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sure. So again, I know I have this information, but I appreciate no. you uh, pointing it out. Absolutely. So, so for, for during the last ten years, we did hit a uh, those benchmarks. It looks like right from that, from that okay. screen. But the point would be, we could have done better. Um, from my, or at least my view, and and PFM has backed that up as well. So, mm -hmm. um, so that's really what we'd be looking at. Gotcha. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, sure. And again, I'll just comment saying we would hope that CS McKee would bring to us options about how we can be. Or any of our any of our money managers would bring to us the best way to manage our money and get the best returns. And in this case, it was where we had to put some pressure or start to question or say, you you know, you haven't been hitting your benchmarks. We may be looking out, you know, we may be looking for other options. Or they come in and say, well, we can actually save you some money uh, this way. So again, that's um, the fact that we have to put pressure on them is again, they're they're. They didn't bring us it, this to us out of nowhere. It came because we were concerned about what we were seeing. Right, and I think that also speaks to the benefit of having a dedicated person uh, to be watching this on a more regular basis. Absolutely, yeah. So the, the, there really are two are two options or two conversations. The one is the RFP. Oh, right. 
RFP for potential uh, passive management of a portion of our fund based on the fact that we have been doing worse than the benchmark in our large cap. The second thing is, do, do we have a PFM type entity that comes in that gives us an overall perspective um, to alert us of this? I'm not, but again, that's, uh, yeah, there's, there's conversations with oh, that right. as well. But, um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't intend yeah. to derail our conversation today, but yeah. just pointing oh, no. out. Not a, not a derailment at all. I think it's good to, for us to appreciate, uh, Colleen. Thank you. Yeah, this is this is Tom, and that was my question too. Was I know PFM had laid out different. Um, they had laid out all the information for us, and we were looking at an, an RF, uh, URFP process here for the passive management, but I. That's what I wasn't sure if the board was entertaining at all, looking at the um, fund investment advisor options that they had laid out as far as um, you know, having an outsourced CIO, somebody that knows the different funds and, and the things like that. So I didn't know which way we were we were heading. And just my feedback on that, Tom, is one of the questions we asked for PFM during one of the last retirement board meetings or, or when we had an audience with them and they reported their uh, their latest findings for the second quarter was we I had essentially asked them you know do you, do you as PFM do you come in and run an RFP process as a money money manager that would be able to you know could you could you run that and their answer was well we we would that would take us out of the running to bid to put an RFP in therefore we we wouldn't want to do we wouldn't want to do that oversight at this point and so um, I, I think my 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 read of it is that we would internally have to do an RFP process, which, again, could be based on what other another county has done, and we could put our own flavor on it. And then after we're done with that, uh, if we select somebody, we could then bring in a, um, you know, like you said, a CIO or a, um, you know, money manager, an overarching money manager that could help us to go forward from there. That's how I would see the best path forward to do an internal RFP. I think we can crunch the numbers ourselves. But then after that, we could have the conversation about, do we want to bring somebody else in to give, give a give yeah. opportunity? Mike, this is Margaret. Uh, I uh, understand the process that you're following, and I just as went, was wondering if there's any value to thinking about having a um, chief investment advisor on board to help evaluate the RFPs for, for passive management, because I'm not clear, did, did PFM say, we wouldn't be looking them to be the passive manager in any case, right? Or we would? No, they, yeah. they, had, they had discussed the fact that they, they would be interested in, in putting uh, an RFP okay. in for that, yeah. The passive management part, okay, I, I wasn't clear about that, thank you. So my idea doesn't make any sense. No, 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 I, it, uh, uh, yeah, it just would be that, that conflict of them they're they're more interested in in not in not being the gate or the goalkeeper for the RFP. They they really and and breaking the RFP down. They want to be able to apply for it, right? Yeah, that's that's correct for PFM because if, if you recall, they actually built into the agreement to do the analysis that they would waive the fee for doing the analysis if eventually we did an RFP and they were the selected. Uh, company from that. So they are interested in uh, being involved in the process. And I will say, um, I didn't, I just found this last night, so I wasn't able to sit share it prior to the meeting anyway, but I can send it out afterwards. I found an RFP that Lancaster County issued last year. Um, now they went the consultant route, and I think they went to the route where the board still had to make all of the individual decisions rather than empowering the CIO to make those decisions based on the board's guidance. So it might be a little bit different than what we're uh, thinking about, maybe in line with what some people are thinking about, but I can share that so that everybody can see it. it is, it's about a 10 page document. So um, it's pretty well detailed though, and I could see hours potentially looking similar to it. So um, it's, it's pretty well done. So I'll share that later as well. Okay, thank you, Jason, thank you. Any other feedback, comments on proceeding with uh, having us create an RFP uh, for a potential large cap? We can, we can structure it however we want it, but it, 
predominantly would be large cap for passive management. Any other feedback, comments on that? Okay, seeing and hearing none, uh, we would then look for a motion. And the way that we have the motion structure here is uh, approval, approval to proceed with a request for a proposal for passive management for retirement funds, large cap investments. And um, again, if we take the action for just to include large cap investments, potentially as we get closer to issuing the RFP, we could in include uh, different, we could, we could make it only for one money, ma money manager, it could be for both, or it could be uh, expanded out into other realms as well. But um, would there be somebody who would be willing to make that motion? Make the motion to uh, proceed with the RFP for passive management for retirement funds, large cap investments. <laughs> Is there a second to the motion? I will second it. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any final discussion? May I ask a question? Of course. Uh, if um... The RFP goes out and PFM decides to um, put their hat in the ring for uh, the passive manager role. Would that exclude them from being uh, considered if you decide to go the route of a chief investment officer? Would that take them out of the running then for the CIO role? If they, if they were to be awarded the passive management piece. Does the board have any thoughts on that or perspective? I would, uh, this is Jason, I would think my understanding is um, if we're going to go the passive management route, that um, I mean, my perspective is that if we're going that route, if we're going to put an RFP out for it, it would also be considering whether that company would be doing the, would be the also the CIO for the retirement fund as well, but that would be part and parcel of that package. It's not a separate role. It's, it's the same thing. Okay, thank you for the clarification. I wasn't sure if you envisioned something separate or not. No, I think that's that's uh, I I would be in the same uh, same mindset there. Any other feedback to, to Margaret's question? Okay, all right. Um, so in terms of time frame, before we look for uh, uh, the vote on this. A time frame for this or a team that would put it together. Um, I think I think as Jason mentioned, there are other counties that have done this. And so um uh I'd be happy to help in any way, uh Jason, with that if you if you wanted a, a second set of eyes or um you know we, we you know I'm I'm more than happy to work on that. Um we could even uh send a draft around to everybody if you wanted to do that. We can provide some feedback if you wanted to schedule some you know, uh, some times where we could do a, a work session on this, uh, however you'd want to, um, I think I, I would think I would suggest we'd be comfortable designating the controller as sort of the, um, you know, leading that process to create it. And, um, you know, we could um, su su uh, submit feedback um, if you're comfortable with that, Jason, but that, that I might suggest that that's the process we run. Yeah, that's fine with me. Okay. And then when we would uh, release the RFP, we'd have to think about whether or not we would do it via the county commissioners or if it's the retirement board. Um, I think we've always been, you know, we, we haven't necessarily, I don't, I don't know what the county code would say, or I, I think it could be the retirement board that would release it. And I don't know if Lancaster, did Lancaster County, Jason, was it their retirement board who released it? Well, that's a good question. Um... Hey. You know what? We we can we can that could be the uh, tune in next week uh, to find out what happened, um, just so we can keep our our viewing audience with us. Okay, uh, but um, yeah, we can we can look into that. But anyway, that that's too deep too uh, to be determined. But um, anyway, but uh, again, I, I I think we're all happy to give some feedback, thoughts, suggestions regarding it. And um, again, we can borrow and not have to reinvent the wheel. So, sure. any final discussion on that before we take a vote? Okay, hearing and seeing none, all in favor of proceeding with RFP preparation, say aye. 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 
Opposed say nay. Motion is carried. Okay. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, everybody, for the feedback questions. Uh, we will then be looking for uh, any other items before we look to adjourn. Any other items we need to consider, discuss, cover? Okay. All right. Uh, we will look for a motion to adjourn the retirement board at 126. Motion to adjourn the retirement board at 126. All right, it's been moved by Commissioner Higgins, seconded by Controller Moser. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed to adjourning? Say nay. Motion is carried. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Thanks.